read them again, RS 250 Cup. A car that, certainly on 19 inch rims, and the cup suspension is just too firm for most British B-roads. The exhaust in standard trim is too quiet. It's not even that quick in a straight line. And the gearbox is, well, average at best. And aesthetically, well, it's a bit of a Marmite car. And for me, I'm not a great lover of the looks either. And the cabin, well, disc out the yellow dot Recaro's and it's, again, middling at best. So why do I think the Megane 250 is the performance car buy of 2024? Well, for one simple reason, it's handling. The handling and steering and feel you get from this car is one of the best ever at any price. Welcome to this week's Fast and Fun. So this is first of a trio of Megane videos I'm going to do over the coming weeks. Um, not necessarily all in one go, but you'll certainly see them in the next four or five weeks. This video is looking at why I think the Megane RS now has turned into one of, if not the buy, for affordable performance car of 2024. The second video is going to be about this specific car. It's hit the 150,000 miles. And be a bit of a myth buster, I think, about what cars, performance cars, Megans, notoriously niggly with the reliability. How has mine fared with that many miles on the clock in a, only a 14-year-old car? And then the third video is I'm going to pitch it up against my youngest son, Archie's Volkswagen Golf GTI Edition 30, Stage 1 mat, because that is a, a real direct comparator, probably value as well, not necessarily mine, but a lower mileage 250. It would be a direct competitor to the Edition 30. Um, and that's front engine. Uh, front wheel drive, turbocharged, three door hatch, so that should be a, a cracking video to do. So how good is the McGann steering really? Well, you, when you put it into sport mode in the McGann and it changes the throttle sensitivity, um, you just get so much adjustability with the throttle through the corners. Um, you need to make sure you've got a cup as well, so it's got the front limited slip differential, the LSD, um, and it's really on track that you can start to learn how good these cars are. It defies how hard these cars can actually corner. Um, the turning is crisp. I, I can feel absolutely where the limit is. The front suspension, the wheels are telling me through the steering exactly what's happening. That immediate turning. Um, and you can feel when the front tyres are starting to push out slightly wide and right at the edge of the, the limit. And again, on track, you almost corner through um, the use of your right foot on the accelerator. You can really play with it. And it almost, almost makes you feel better than you probably actually are. In the five years I've done YouTube and 30 years of driving, there's only one car that I would say comes close to the steering feel that you get through a Megane. And that was, again, another 2010 play, actually, a Porsche Cayman S 987 Gen 2. I would say that was rear wheel drive, but I would say the steering on that was on par with the Megane. They were both and both are absolutely brilliant. I'm just so thankful that Renault, through their Renault Sport division, built and developed this car. And these cars, whether Clio's or Megane's or going back generations to 
well, the original Clio Williams and Renault 5 GT turbos. They've had a brilliant few decades and really showed the world how good they are, even though Renault Sport in name don't, don't, uh, don't carry on. This corner here, just feel, you'll feel the car just load up. Oh, it just digs in deep. And uh, the cornering, that turning, the steering telling you, loading up, and it just the LSD working to pull, pull you through the corner. Again here, another sweeping left hand here, third gear. Just it's just devastatingly quick through corners. It just eggs you on. Breaking for two, really tricky downhill, hard right, hard left. Oh, that really crisp turning. Oh, the way it picks up. And because it's turbocharged, the power's where you want it, right in the middle of the revs. <laughs> I love this car. If the performance and the cornering ability is great in the dry, in the wet, it's even more um, impressive. Mine rides on Pilot Sport 4S's, they offer so much, and the, the way it can t turn and hold its position and, and corner and the LSD working to just get only, not only power down, but the lateral loads through the corners. Uh, and in the wet, it's, it's almost astoundingly good. Um, and once you get to know the car, when you put it onto the road, it's just a, it's just a fun car to, to drive and, and own. The Megans, for many years, at the bottom of the market, had been sort of six to seven k. You'd get your higher mileage ones, a bit leggy, missing history, needed a bit of work, and you really probably needed seven to eight to get start getting into a half decent one. Eight to ten, you you, you had a nice bulk of them. Well, those days have sort of gone now, and over the last six or 12 months, um, the, 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 that, that floor has dropped, and it's dropped now, and I've seen some Megans now dip below 5,000, um, and that suddenly is putting them into a whole different area. Um, I, I, and I don't think it's specific to the Megan. I think the whole second-hand sports car market has really suffered. But when you look car to car and I compare it to something like my Clio 182 um, Clio 182s that are brilliant lightweight hot hatch fun but they are that they are not a Megane if it was purely about driving dynamics the Megane would win hands down but yet Megans are now dropping into Clio 182 money Parts and servicing, it's quite affordable. It's not that expensive at all. And I would say it's cheap compared to the German marks. And residuals, the future values. I, I generally don't think there's anywhere left for the Megane RSs to fall. I think for what you, what you get, they've hit the bottom. And that's why so many have been converted to track cars, because they're so great at handling and they're so affordable to run. talking of that it's about for the DIY club the modified gang the guys that and girls that want to modify their cars well the 250 and the 265 and the, the latter 275 it was just a simple remaps of the same engine and turbo it just means you're getting a newer car and so for me if you buy a base 250 just a simple stage one will get you 280 290 brake horsepower no bother at all and there's a whole marketplace out there awash to take your car from a standard OEM spec as it left the factory all the way through to a 
lightweight, stripped out track car. You have to remember, those negatives that I talked about at the start of the video, you can actually fix the majority of those. The 19 inch alloys with the firm ride and the cup suspension, well, reducing the alloy size to 18s or even 17s will definitely improve the quality of the ride. The exhaust, easy fix, which many, many will have already been done, just to get a bit more of a noise, exhaust noise to the, um, to the Megane. Power, straight line performance, remaps, some subtle external engine mods and you can easily get a Megane to run 320, 325 horsepower which will give you more than you need really for the road and even the notchy, not brilliant gear change can certainly be vastly improved with something like a 0 0.1 or CAE shifter. If you've never driven a Megane, I would ask this. Why, when you go to a track day, are there more Megans than just about any other car there? And the simple answer is because they are great value for money, affordable, relatively cheap to run, with great performance and great opportunity to change the car, modify that car into something a little bit quicker and a little bit more focused. But as the base OEM, the standard out the factory Megane goes, they're hard to beat. And now prices, for me, under that 5k floor, this for me is the bargain performance car buy of 2024. Let me know guys if you agree or disagree. Tell me what you'd buy with a 5k budget. I'll be interested to read. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, stay tuned. Two more Megan videos coming up, plus a whole host of other cars on the channel. Keep subscribing, thumbs up, stay tuned. Thanks for watching.